First, though, we're following some breaking news. After this round of severe winter weather hit the natural state, Governor Asa Hutchison has now declared a state of emergency. That's right, a state of emergency here in the state. That means that in that proclamation issued today, it states that the winter storms, quote, continue to cause dangers, hardships, and suffering in the state of Arkansas. All right, thank you so much for joining us for your 5 News at Noon on this weather alert day. It is a busy day with a lot going on. I'm Ruben Diaz. Let's begin first, though, with uh, meteorologist Tyler Moore giving us a first look at what we can see now that the sun is, well, not the sun, but now that it's daylight at least, right, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, at least we can see a little bit better. A South Salt Police Officer's Law Enforcement Certification has been revoked. You may remember seeing some of this body cam video over the past couple of years. You'll remember back in 2020, Billy Oliver was fired from the department after allegations of excessive force while out on a call with some of that video, right? A mediator reinstated Oliver, and then he got his job back. Moments later, the South Salt City manager actually put him on paid leave until his certification could be heard by the Council of Law Enforcement, Education, and Training. A few days ago, they revoked his police officer certification. Now, we don't know for sure if the city of South Salt has officially put out word about his job status, so we're waiting to hear that. Oliver is also at the center of an FBI investigation of an alleged rape of a Sequoia County woman. That case is still pending. Electric companies have already been preparing for days in case of power outages. All the electric companies that serve customers in the River Valley and Northwest Arkansas have been monitoring the forecast and have crews on standby for the outages. There are outages to report from OG&E as well as, as from SWEPCO, and we even checked the, the Arkansas Valley Electric Co-op as well. There are a handful in each of those. We believe that there's about, um, I want to say there's about 950 in Waldron, yes. about 300 in Greenwood, 300 outages in Greenwood. <clears throat> so we're seeing some outages across the area this time. Now, we did speak with OG&E spokesperson Trisha Kelch telling us that last February's deep freeze uh, has got them invested more in their power grid. And they've got some new technology that helps them with faster outage identifications and that helps them automatically reroute power to many, as many customers as they can. Now, to help prepare your home for potential power outages, you got to make sure you have things like batteries, blankets, chargers, charge all those devices that you need to have charged and make sure you have some food available that you can eat that doesn't need to be heated up. All right, as we talk about outages and we talk about the winter weather, obviously schools in the area are going to be affected as well. Several schools in the area closed are going virtual today because of this winter weather. We're talking about Bentonville, Fayetteville, Greenwood, Springdale, Alma, and Rogers all doing virtual learning today. All right, still no decision on that homeless shelter's plan to relocate in Fort Smith. I know everybody was expecting that decision, right? Last night, Fort Smith City directors were supposed to vote on plans by Next Step Homeless Services to build that new shelter near South U Street in Towson Avenue. That decision, though, has been tabled until February the 15th. A meeting room full of residents for and against the plans were definitely disappointed with no final word. It's the second time the issue, though, has come up for vote by directors and the second time it's been delayed. Welcome back to 5 News this morning. Now, despite a lawsuit filed against Washington County, the quorum court actually passed a resolution praising the actions of the doctor that was hired to treat inmates at the county jail. Now, you'll remember the ACLU of Arkansas actually filed a lawsuit on behalf of four Washington County inmates after the sheriff revealed that last August, Dr. Robert Karras was using ivermectin as a treatment for people diagnosed with COVID. Despite all those challenges, Dr. Karras and the staff of Karras Correctional Health have shown up faithfully, performed their duties with extraordinary success, and have been great partners for the county. Why in the world would this body endorse a practice that is being challenged in court? Are we trying to just help the people that are suing the county? That's a terrible idea. Obviously, some passionate feelings there. Just last week, attorneys for the county and Dr. Karras asked a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuit, citing several grounds for why they believe the lawsuit should be dismissed. A decision has not been made. This winter weather also impacting businesses in the area. The Tyson Foods and Randall Road Cornish plant in Springdale will be closed tomorrow. That's right. The officials there tell us they will also not run production tonight. So there's going to be some, some changes there. Dozens of schools have closed early today. We have a list of all the closings that we're updating as they come in. So real-time updates for you there. You can find it on 5newsonline.com to keep in touch with whether or not your school is open or closed. And since it is Wednesday and a lot of churches have services tonight, we're hearing that several of those are now canceling ahead of the storm as well. If you're planning to attend a service tonight, it is probably a good idea to call that church or visit their social media pages before you hit the road.